In this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the selection tools used in Photoshop. We make selections so that we could edit images uh, and do different things to those images uh, just based on, on the selections. Uh, and there's quite a multitude of things that we can do once we have a selection working with layers and masks and so forth. So uh, to start off with uh, Photoshop, basically there, there are three types of selection tools. Uh, and if you look in the toolbar, they're grouped together here. There's a rectangular marquee, there's a lasso tool, and then there's a quick selection tools. I'm just going to focus on, on the rectangular marquee tool for the moment. Now the rectangular marquee, it looks like there's a, a rectangle with some dashed lines. Uh, because again, selection tools, we talk about the marching ants, which look like little dashed lines moving. So we call those marching ants when we make selections. If you notice at the bottom right corner of the uh, marquee selection tool, there's a little black arrow indicating that there are some hidden tools behind this tool. Now to choose the, the marquee tool, uh, I'm just going to choose the, the move tool for a second. Now if I want to choose the marquee tool without clicking on that tool, uh, the quick key for that is the letter M for marquee. So if you press the letter key M, that will select the rectangular marquee tool. And if you notice in the options bar, there's a rectangular marquee tool. And then there are the options for the rectangular marquee tool. As I stated earlier, there are some hidden tools behind this rectangular marquee tool. So if I click on that little black arrow in the corner, it will reveal the other tools that are behind the rectangular marquee tool. There's the elliptical marquee tool uh, used to make uh, circles or ellipse uh, selections. And then there's a the single row marquee tool and the single column marquee tool used to either select a single row or column. Uh, these aren't used very often, uh, but they are there for whenever you do need them. So I'm going to concentrate on the rectangular marquee tool. And so I'll just click on that. Now if I want to actually select the, the elliptical marquee tool, uh, the, uh, the letter is M to select the marquee tool. If I press the letter Shift M, that will toggle between the elliptical marquee. And if I press it again, it'll go back to the, the rectangular marquee tool, uh, depending on what you want to use. OK, so I'm going to use the rectangular marquee tool. And just uh, just to point out a few things here, here's the uh, the first uh, button in the options bar is the new selection. So that allows me to make a brand new selection. For example, I may want to select the header of this uh, above this door. Now, when I'm making my selections, as previously uh, talked about with the zoom tool, it's a good idea to zoom in to make a, a better uh, selection as you go along. So um, to select the zoom tool without uh, deselecting the rectangular marquee tool, uh, I'm going to press Control Spacebar, and you can see I get the Zoom In tool, and I'm just going to do a marquee selection by clicking and dragging around the area that I want to zoom in on, and release, and that'll zoom in on the the image. So now I have a better view of what I want to to select with the uh, the rectangular marquee tool. So once again, I want to select the this uh, banner above the uh, this ledge above the door. Now, uh, so the rectangular marquee tool, you can see there's a crosshair. So to get this to work, you just uh, place the cursor at the point where you want to start. So then you hold down the must, mouse button, click and drag to make the this selection. And again, because I'm zoomed in, I could make a, a very good selection because I could see the information in a bit more detail. So I just uh, created a selection of this uh, of this frame. Now, um, if you notice, it is a new selection uh, button is selected in the options. So if I click anywhere in the document, that will automatically deselect my selection. So once again, I'd have to make that selection again. So I'm just going to click and drag to create a new selection. Another way of deselecting uh, without using the mouse or without clicking on the document is to press Control D, and that will ensure everything has been deselected. So once again, I'm going to press the Make a Selection, and there's the selection of the ledge above the door. Now there's a few other options here where I could add to selection. We use the next button there, and for example, I may want to select these little areas above the uh, the ledge that I didn't select in my rectangular selection. So what I want to do is add to my rectangular selection. And again, if I click on the document, it'll 
remove this selection. So I want to be able to click an Add to Selection button so that I can add these pieces in. Now if you notice the cursor changed so that now there is a little plus sign next to the cursor indicating I'm going to be adding to a selection. Now once again this is kind of small here to see so I'm going to zoom in so I can get a better look at the selection I'm going to be making. So what's the quick key? Control spacebar to get the zoom in and then marquee select so I could zoom in and you can see I have a much better view of the selection and you can see how actually poorly I did with that selection because I did miss a spot up here. So I'm going to add to selection and so again I could just have to click and drag and that will add to my selection and I go to spacebar to, to get the move tool and I want to add these pieces in that I missed and you can see again I still have the add to selection button there selected so I could click and drag and add to selection to these pieces that I missed. So click and drag to get the selections. Now sometimes I, I don't want to uh, keep this add to selection button selected because that makes it the default. So I'm going to choose new uh, selection again and again, one of the problems is if I select, click on the document, I'll lose my current selection, but I still want to add to selection. So what I do is I hold the shift key. And if I hold the shift key, that makes it an add to selection. Uh, and if you notice, the button there is automatically changed when I click the shift key. So if I release the shift key, it goes back to new selection. If I press down the shift key, then it'll add to selection. So this is very useful if you want to add to selections and then move your document and then add to another selection. By holding the shift key you don't have to change your options at the top there. You just hold the shift key, make the new selection, release it and then it goes back to the default. So I'm going to press the shift key and again if you notice the button up here it will automatically change to add to selection and then I could go and add to my selection to add that. Now I'm going to hit the space bar to get the hand tool so I can move back and just check out the selections that I've made. Now if you notice here I've exceeded this uh, because I didn't zoom in which I should have done initially and I, I actually went too far when I did make my initial selection. So I want to take away this selection. So that is the next button in the options bar is take away selection. And if you notice here now the cursor has a negative sign which means it's going to take away from selection. So once again I'm just going to click and drag and I'm going to take away this little piece of selection because I don't want it selected and it'll remove that. So the the takeaway removes from a selection uh, and it's very useful as well. Now I'm going to hit the space bar just to peruse this again and I may want to take away down here as well. Now again just like the shift key uh, or just like the, the add to selection I don't necessarily need to press the button for the takeaway from selection or subtract from selection. I'm going to click back on the new selection and if I want to continue to take away from a selection all I have to do is press the alt key and the alt will take away from selections. And that way I don't have to again change the button and if you notice it automatically changed to the take away from selection. If I release the alt key it goes back to new selection and I press the alt comes to take away. So again that's why I like to use the shift and the alt key, the shift to add to selection, the alt to take away selection because I don't have to worry about the options bar. They'll automatically change for me just by pressing the shift or the alt. So the alt's going to take away and I'm going to press the alt key to take away and then I'm going to just click and drag to take away that selection. So that's a nice selection uh, of the, the banner above using the uh, initial uh, uh, new selection and then I added selection by pressing the button and then by holding the shift key and I took away from selections by pressing the subtract from selection or pressing the alt key. Now I'm just going to double click on the hand tool and that brings my zoom in and so I can see the whole document I can see my my selection from there.